Hello again, we're now on to chapter 15 of the Elements of Brie, The Road to the Temple. The first day of walking wasn't too bad for Brie. They walked westward, following the tree line at the base of the mountain. The snow on the ground got thinner the more they walked, but the air still felt cold. To the south of them was a large forest that Blaze told her was known as the Royal Golian Forest that covered most of the interior of the land and backed onto the Castle of Gol. They didn't encounter any monsters on the journey. Perhaps the mere sight of Blaze and his scars scared them away. Near the end of the day, they had found a section of trees with a path cut between them. The path led to the mountain and climbed upward. Bree could see a tower sticking up high in the mountains above them. The Temple of the Aether looked small from down here, but she guessed it would be bigger than she expected once they got closer. They made camp inside the tree line near a large hollowed-out stump. Bree sat up her bed in the stump while Blaze and Odiana gathered kindling for a fire. They did manage to find some dry wood, and using some of the small sparks from Odiana's wand, got a fire going that eventually got big enough to keep Bree warm. Blaze left for a while and came back with a small rodent to eat. Bree opened her backpack and found one of her aunt's sandwiches. It was still good and made us for a satisfying meal. Odiana found some berries for herself and hummed softly while she ate. Their campsite was silent for a while. Do you miss home? Blaze suddenly asked, making Bree jump a little. Passerelle? No. Now that I'm in goal, I finally realize how much I miss this place, even though I was sent away as a baby. Blaze nodded and began licking his paws from his meal. Bree looked over his body to see the scars around each of his legs and even one over his eye. After a moment or two, Blaze noticed this and looked at her. I'm sorry, Bree said. Blaze cocked his head to one side. About what? Your wounds and the scar on your face. I barely noticed them. I was worried that I would show up with large stitches from all of Aunt Margaret's repairs, but those vanished when I returned to this form. Bree smiled. That would have looked strange. When the boys in town ripped off your legs, did you feel it? Blaze stared at the fire. In Passerelle, it was like I was in a dream. I felt movement, but that was it. There was no physical pain. I watched you grow up. I watched the, bro the boys destroy me and your aunt put me back together and even got a little dizzy when we fell out of that tree. To be honest, the last couple of years in the attic were tough. I didn't know where you were and I was very lonely. You don't know how happy I was when you found me the other day. Bree felt her eyes well up with tears, thinking about Blaze alone in the attic in the barn. She rubbed her eyes and took a deep breath to calm herself. I'm still sorry, and I'm very happy you're with me now. Odiana made a noise and wiggled on her part of the tree stump. I'm happy too. Bree chuckled and then lay down in front of the fire. She looked up to see two dark moons in the sky in the distance. Blaze came over and lay down beside her. Are you okay? he asked. She nodded. It feels both strange and comfortable to be in this new world. I'm not bothered by the magic enchantment on my hip pouch. As well, I'm used to one white moon, but now I see two dark moons and it doesn't bother me. But I find it fascinating. It'll be that way for a while. Get some rest. We have a mountain to climb tomorrow. Have a great day, everyone.